Environmental Clearance Process and EAA Notification 2006. So last class we discussed what is EAA and its elements. So here we will be dealing with two topics EAA Notification 2006 and Environmental Clearance Process. So we know that before starting any new project we have to definitely go through um, environmental impact assessment. So the required construction of new project it can be any activity or the expansion or modernization of any existing project or activities whatever it is it should prior uh, go through the environmental clearance from the central government or it can be from the state level environmental impact assessment authority. Okay, so this environmental clearance process uh, is having four schedules, schedule 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the first schedule is the list of projects requiring clearance from the central government. Okay, so uh, all the projects which are needed to go through this clearance is initially listed. Then uh, second uh, schedule that is the application form that is the industry should submit an application form for the environmental clearance to Union Ministry of Environment and Forest. And the third one is schedule 3 that is composition of expert committee for giving environmental clearance that is experts from uh, various disciplines including air pollution, then uh, risk analysis, social service, NGOs, then uh, economics, water pollution etc. constitute this committee then schedule 4 is the procedure for a uh, public hearing so publics are always allowed uh, to share their concerns okay so schedule 4 is public hearing now According to this uh, EAA notification 2006, a schedule is prepared for the list of projects or activities requiring prior environmental clearance. So this schedule will be having a list of projects whether this project should go through the environmental clearance or not. Okay, first they will uh, sort these projects. Then they will have to undergo so many uh, criteria and finally giving the clearance, finally uh, deciding whether to give the clearance or not categorization of projects and activities so whatever the project or activities may be it is broadly classified into two categories category a and category b uh, it is uh, um, the categories uh, are uh, based on spatial extent of impacts that is in how much extent the uh, the impact of the project affects and then the impacts on natural and man-made resources and the impacts on human health so how the uh, human health and natural man-made resources are getting affected by the impacts so initially preparing the list of EIA projects, then does it meet the criteria for category A? If it meets the criteria for category A, uh, A then it will be appraised or the assessment is done uh, at a central level. Okay, And if it does not meet the criteria for category A, then it, it will be definitely uh, coming under category B. So the appraisal is done by a state level. As we said now for the category A projects, uh, the EC is done by central government in the Ministry of Environment and Forest and for category B pro projects at the state level, the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority that is SCIAA. Okay, so this SCIAA will be uh, making their decisions on the recommendations of a state or union territory level expert appraisal committee that is SCAC. Now, in the absence of this SCIAA and SCAC, the category B projects will be treated as category A projects. Okay, And uh, it will be again appraised by uh, the uh, central government in the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Now, uh, these are the list of uh, project categories required to go through environmental clearance. So, you can just go through it. Uh, I have given so many examples mining extraction, uh, primary processing, then material uh, production and materials processing, manufacturing and fabrication, then service sectors, physical infrastructure including environmental services, then building construction projects, area development projects, and townships. These categories are prepared in such a way that. They have to definitely go through the environmental clearance before uh, starting the project. Now, the application of this environmental clearance uh, should be in a prescribed format uh, that should have a certain um, um, contents and 
this uh, form 1 or form 1A to be, is uh, submitted only after the identification of prospective site for the project. So they have to initially find out a suitable site for it. Then before starting the project, this form 1 should be submitted and it should be also before preparation of land at the site. Okay, so before starting the construction work. Then these are the contents uh, that we have to submit along with this form 1. That is the size of the project. So how much uh, size uh, or the, um, the area it covers. Then the expected cost of the project. Activities involved in the project. That is like it may be a demolition work or dredging work, a new road, then uh, modernization or anything. So what? Uh, exactly the activity is involved in the project then the use of natural resources uh, for carrying out the project then how much uh, solid waste is uh, produced then how much uh, pollutants are released it can be a toxic or noxious substances then how much effluent is generated as a part of this uh, project then generation of noise and vibration so all these things are uh, affecting our nat nature as well as human beings so the the impact is definitely measured before starting any project next is environmental clearance process so we just went through the uh, notification to 2006 and now is environmental clearance process so this is actually required for uh, 39 types of projects main purpose is to assess the impact of the planned project or environment and people uh, in India, uh, till 1918, most of the projects were cleared without any environmental clearance. And the National Committee on uh, Environmental Planning, it was set up in a fourth five-year plan, that is uh, 1969 to 1978. So before this 1980, all issues related to environmental clearance were dealt by Department of Science and Technology. Okay, And in 1980, the Department of Environment set up to deal with uh, such kind of issues. Department of Environment upgraded to Ministry of Environment and Forest in uh, 1985. And uh, finally, in 1994, MOEF issued uh, guidelines for EIA. MOEF is uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest. Now, moving on to the steps in clearing. So, these are all the uh, steps which uh, comes under clearance process. Now, we'll, we'll be seeing one by one. So, the process of clearance. The project uh, proponent has to submit a report that assesses the impact of project on environment called uh, environment impact assessment to SPCB. SPCB is State Pollution Control Board. So, for which it hires a consultant. Now, this uh, report is then assessed by SPCB in the following steps. So, the first step is screening. Screening is the uh, most preliminary step of this assessment. SPCB has a uh, record and data of impacts that have been caused by projects in the past based on which it develops the, um, um, you know, the uh, threshold levels. That is how much intensity um, the impact has. Okay, that is uh, being checked and um, if the project impact is less than uh, these threshold, the project is given clearance straight away. Okay, otherwise the proponent has to go to the next level that is the preliminary assessment. Now, next, next step of uh, clearance is preliminary assessment. So, it involves uh, more uh, research and review of the EIA data uh, based on which the clearance is given. So, there are certain uh, drawbacks in Indian system. Uh, I have listed it. So, the first one is a low investment project. They will not be uh, given uh, clearance. Uh, it, uh, I mean, uh, clearance will be straightly given to them. And the uh, consultants, um, consultants, uh, they are hired by actually the proponents. Proponents may be the uh, on the owner or the persons who are closely related with the project or uh, it can be even an advocate so they will be um, uh, under um, pressure to get the clearance okay so then false data EIA will be having some false data or entry then corruption uh, will be happening and the lack, uh, lack of expertise among the uh, consultants that is the consultant may not be much familiar with the project Okay, step is uh, formation of EIA team. So, if the project fails screening and the preliminary assessment, EIA report is uh, then uh, sent to um, 
a team of experts hired by uh, this SPCB for detailed review. Okay, so the main drawback of uh, um, that step is the team members may be lacking expertise, as I said in the previous step, uh, that can be uh, in social uh, or uh, wildlife impact studies in India. Okay, so it can be anything. So they may be not knowing much uh, on uh, certain fields. Next is uh, identification and scoping. So, in uh, scoping, the expert team, uh, team uh, tries to estimate which sections of society or environment and economy would be affected. Okay. So, the expert team uh, tries to uh, tries to estimate this by holding um, what uh, they uh, discuss with people of respective fields. So, based on scoping and the results of this uh, preliminary study, the team identifies the issues of conflict which need to be um, studied further. Now the drawbacks in this uh, uh, step is the local people, local people's opinion will not be taken at this uh, initial level, that is one uh, bad thing and the expert study, uh, they will be studying only the direct impacts in India, they will not be going much deeper into the impacts. Okay, next point is prediction and evaluation. Here they use uh, mathematical and physical models in order to predict the uh, impacts and evaluation, uh, evaluating the prediction that is whether they will be significant or not. And uh, here also we have a lot of dr drawbacks like because of this uh, um, very narrow scoping all impacts are to be, um, all impacts cannot be predicted. Okay, then uh, detail of method of prediction, the evaluation uh, will never be disclosed to anyone. So, there are numerous methods to find out or to do the prediction, but they will never disclose what method they have used in order to uh, evaluate this. Okay, then uh, in uh, many cases, inaccurate prediction is also seen. So, these are all the drawbacks of prediction and evaluation. And coming to mitigation. So, after evaluating the uh, impacts, we have to, uh, they have to suggest alternative measures, right. So, alternative measures uh, to, to the proponent like paying uh, concessions to the people or offering restoration of uh, some kind of resources or use of cleaner technology, all these suggestions are made forward and um, this, this is also having some drawbacks like lack of transparency and people will not be informed about the preparedness measures. They will be suddenly taking some steps and people will be getting suffered. So, there is no proper transparency uh, regarding the methods or the measures they are adopting. And then public hearing. So, public hearing um, as we already discussed, it involves the discussion between the project proponent and the representatives of the society. So, it is done to include the concerns of uh, all sections of the society in the decision making process. Okay. So, in, it involves all these uh, members or representatives, SPCB representatives, district collectors, state government representatives, and three representatives of uh, Gram Panjayat and three senior citizens. Uh, the, those members are directly uh, nominated by collectors. So, all these members are uh, sitting for, for public hearing. And this public hearing is also having some drawbacks like all the uh, all the projects may, may not be submitted or uh, presented for public hearing. Some projects will be exempted from that. Then public opinion will not be given much importance. They will not be doing it for making any um, big change, but uh, just to carry out this step. Okay. Then uh, also in that group, there may be some illiterate people who cannot actually raise the points uh, in, in, in the way they really want it. Okay. Then corruption is, a, uh, is an important drawback and public hearing notice. Uh, it should be uh, given... 30 days before as per nomination. Uh, sometimes uh, this notice may be delayed or it, it will be, um, you know, um, it will be left unnoticed. Then people are not given access to EIA documents. That is another important drawback. That is they will not be able to access the documents which are uh, most important to carry out the project. Then the last step is Environment Appraisal Committee. So after NOC, 
from uh, SPCB. The proponent approaches state or even MOEF for clearance, uh, uh, which uh, forms a committee of experts uh, to analyze the project. So, committee has to uh, give clearance within 90 days of time. Okay. And again, the drawbacks involved in this step is the decision making is not transparent and the information regarding government decision making is not dissipated among the citizens. That that is whatever the decisions are taken, they will not be uh, uh, disclosed completely to the citizens. Okay, so these are the process of uh, clearance.